So guys, a really big feature of Chapter 4's map is going to be the floating loot island that pops up every single game that you guys are playing. Now, obviously in casual games, it's really helpful for you guys to actually win the game and you know get a lot of really good loot and get a lot of eliminations there. However, the same thing in competitive is way more important because pretty much whoever gets the loot island has a drastically higher chance of winning the game. In today's video, I wanna go over exactly how you guys can capture this island pretty much every single time and how you can benefit from all the attributes of this island. And I do know that Chapter 4 Season 3 is ending very soon. However, I still think that a system like this is going to be in place in whatever we have next season and the seasons following that so I think this video will still be very applicable when it comes to future seasons. Now let's hop right into this video. Now I want to start off by going over some general information on the island. Now obviously this is an island with a capture point. Now this capturing of this flag does take around 45 seconds to fully complete and you guys have to stay inside of this little zone in order to try and capture the island and get all the benefits from it. Now this floating loot island is going to be having plenty of chests for you guys to loot around the area. Once you actually capture the capture point, it's going to be having mythic weapons that drop and also slurp juices. There's also going to be rifts around the area on the ground and then launch pads on the island itself that you guys can use to rotate very easily. And it's also of course elevated above the ground for easy high ground that you guys can gain if you're on this island. And lastly, the biggest thing is that it has plenty of materials. So if you guys are low in materials and even somebody has already captured it, you guys can go up to this island, farm a lot of wood, a lot of brick, Metal is a little bit scarcer, however, it's still there. The island is really a solid way for you guys to actually re-loot and restack up on what you guys have. Now that I've gone over the general basics of what the island has and what it contains, I want to go over exactly what you guys will have to do in order to try and capture it. Now the first main thing that you guys will definitely have to consider is that you'll definitely have to fight. Now especially in competitive when you guys are on this island, plenty of people are going to be trying to board the island, try to climb up to it, try to zip line up to it, and they're going to be trying to take it for themselves. Because of all the really good things that I mentioned before, it's a very popular spot to go once it pops up, and especially if you are close to it. So that's actually one of the biggest things I would consider. Depending on how close you are to the island, you need to really decide whether or not it's worth it for you to try and go get. I say if you're within 300 meters of this island, it's definitely a good idea to try and go and take the island, especially if you can get there really quickly. However, if you're further than that, I mean, obviously you can go for it. However, it does get a bit more risky. Now, they're obviously are different techniques of how you guys can fight on this island there's pretty much one of three ways you guys can do so number one you guys can be the person who initially boards the island and the person who's trying to capture the point the first time for themselves this is going to be the time where you guys are trying to go to the island box up kind of stay there until the capture point's captured and then you're pretty much set as soon as you capture it however the second type of player is going to be the person that tries to kill that person on the island so for example if you want the island and there's somebody already there boxed up this is going to be the type of player that goes up to that person on the island and tries to eliminate them and then get all of their loot and all the other benefits of the island and then obviously the third type of player is any who basically third parties after that you could be a third party a fourth party a fifth party it doesn't really matter what you are after that it's pretty much kind of an every man for himself war zone on the island that is the one thing about them if you're one of the people who is later than the second person it's very tough to actually win the fight a lot of the time unless there's very few people left in the lobby because if there's very few people left in the lobby that means that there's not going to be that many people that are actually willing to go for that island especially if there's somebody already on it now obviously you're gonna have to fight with people trying to contest you on the island in terms of specifics on how to fight i'd recommend obviously get the high ground you guys can use the house you can easily try to use the areas that have slightly more elevation in terms of actual natural land however if you guys are not able to get the high ground i'd recommend that you try to use the low ground area of the island which is kind of the little underground system that they have you could also use the building you guys can hide inside of there you can find a little room and try to make it your own or you can find multiple areas around the flag and then box up creating at least four boxes in which you guys have you guys can connect to the house you guys can connect to the bottom launch pad area what really matters is that you guys try to get the most amount of peace control around the area and then look for peaks on the enemy to catch them off guard if they're on the high ground if they're on the same layer as you it's really just a simple box fight i'd recommend in that circumstance you try to take the high ground and then aggress onto them after that However, that's a general rule of thumb, in my opinion, for fighting on this island. You can obviously be the player that's going first, the player that's going second, or the third parties after that. And all three ways are very intelligent to play if you play them right. Now guys, another tip that's really helpful for this island is that if you guys do remember back in chapter 2 and chapter 3, I'd recommend you definitely try to cheat this POI like a mythic POI. So if you guys remember all the way back in chapter 2 season 2, we had the agency. Now the agency would be absolutely packed with so many people landing there right off the rip. They'd be Midas, you need to kill Midas and then get his drum gun and you need to get his key card in order to unlock the vault. However, what some people fail to understand is that this is kind of the same way except there's just no vault. It's kind of just the fact that you have the capture point. You still get mythic items from it in really good loot however the difference is, is that this is going to be way smaller and this is popping up in the middle of the game so when you're there people are already going to be having really good loot the best way i'd actually recommend you guys to try and practice to fight on this island and to treat it like a mythic poi is to play stuff like realistic pvp literally what's going to be happening is people are going to be flying into this island 
and they're gonna be trying to do fights on top of this island in which you need to try and win. Realistic PvP, which is a creative game mode, is pretty much the exact same thing. If you do that, you're definitely going to succeed in actually improving on fighting and actually capturing the island every time. Now, instead of a key card, you're obviously going to be having the zone and capturing the flag. But once you capture the island, you will have visibility through walls and you're also going to be able to see players that are on the island trying to interfere with you. My recommendation is trying to focus on getting all of the features of the POI before you decide to leave and go engage. That's how it compared to a mythic POI. Try to drain the whole thing of all of its valuable loot. And then once you're done with that, then you can easily go and fight other players around the map. Now, obviously guys, the last really important thing about this island that I do want to go over is the future of it. I do think that this is going to be very valuable for the future of competitive Fortnite. However, what I think that's really important about this island is how players are actually going to be setting up to predict it. Now, obviously the island could spawn anywhere theoretically. However, there are different ways to predict exactly where it's going to be. From my experience playing with this island, this is just a simple theory that I have. I believe that the island spawns really close to other highly elevated structures. For example, this could be in an area near Brutal Bastion in which there's mountains around the area. This could be near Creaky Compound where there's elevated areas around the place with the jungle divot biome in between. This could be even near the Citadel where it spawns somewhere in that area with the Citadel being highly elevated right next to it. Now, I believe the reason for this is to try to kind of even the playing field for how the elevation of the island helps you. However, once again, that is just my theory. I don't want anybody to take this too seriously because once again, it is just a theory, but I do believe that generally the island will spawn really close to some variety of mountains in the area. But overall, that's the general tips I have for you guys on how to take this island. I think it's gonna be really valuable and really helpful and competitive, especially going forward. Anybody who gets this island is really going to have a drastically higher chance of winning the game. But guys, that is the video on exactly how to figure out the best way to capture the island. You guys can use this for other things as well, like getting a vault key, trying to capture points at normal POIs. These are really valuable tips, and I think that they're really going to take you guys far if you pay attention to them and use them correctly. But that's about it for this video, guys. Be sure to like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.